All right, folks, you're watching NFL Daily presented by BetDSI, the Internet's number one sportsbook. I am your host, Tom Downey. We'll come back to those head coaching firings here in just a little bit. But first, I want to go through some NFL rumors. And there are some interesting ones to take a look at as we sit right now. Some involving head coaches, some involving quarterbacks as well. So we'll get to these here in just a second for you guys. And some some front office stuff. Maybe a bit of a surprise this morning. The Raiders have found their new GM. Mike Mayock is coming in. Now, he is an under NFL draft viewer for NFL Network as the Raiders just go all in on hiring of the TV guys. Now, he has interviewed for other GM jobs in the past. It quickly went from yesterday he was a candidate to today he's been hired. There are some reasons to be concerned about Mike, Mike Mack, a good evalu evaluator personnel. We know that from his time at NFL Network. But you better hire a good salary cap guy, and maybe you want somebody in there as well to help you out when it comes to the trade side of things because Mayock doesn't have a ton of experience in that. He hasn't worked for an NFL team in the past. So Mike Mayock is the Raiders' new GM. Grade the hiring. What do you guys think? A, B, C, D, or F? It's different. We'll see how he fits with John Gruden. I know we can evaluate talent. That'll be key for the draft. But going forward, how does he handle contract negotiations? How does he handle extensions? How does he handle trades? Those are going to be the big questions for Mayock as the Raiders' GM coming over from NFL Network. All right, quarterback talk now. Jameis Winston. Sounds like he will be back as the Buccaneers quarterback next season. That's the plan for Tampa Bay. Now, he has a $20.9 million non-guaranteed base salary, only guaranteed for injury. And the Bucs' mindset, and I really don't disagree with it, is that they don't think they can find anyone better. I mean, do you want Joe Flacco for a fairly similar price tag? I know that Winston wasn't the best last year, had an... Let's say down 2018 or average 2018 at best. The turnovers remain a big, big problem for the Bucs, but I kind of agree with the mindset. Let's give Winston one more year. He's still young, and who are you going to get that's better? It's not Fitzpatrick because that doesn't help you in the long run. Let's see if Winston can end up being the guy. Now, looking ahead for the Bucs, they're probably going to look for some more depth. You know, Winston is the only guy under contract right now. Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's going to be a free agent. Ryan Griffin, the Bucks like him as a backup, but he's not under contract either. He's also a backup, not going to be a starter anytime in the near future. So Winston, we'll see what happens with his future in Tampa Bay, but it sounds like he'll get one more shot with Dirk Cutter fired. He'll get one more shot with a new head coach as well. All right, folks, today's show is brought to you by BetDSI. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code LIVE120 after you sign up and deposit. DM us on Twitter at chatsports. We'll get you guys hooked up with an NFL jersey. It's the best deal out there. Think about it. You put down 50 bucks, you're going to get 64 free to bet with on BetDSI and an NFL jersey, a legit one from an uh, official NFL jersey. You're not going to find a better deal out there. Chatsports.com slash bet, promo code LIVE120, get you the 120% deposit bonus, and then go DM us on Twitter at Chatsports. And we'll get you guys hooked up with an NFL jersey of your choice. It's the best betting deal out there if you want to get in in the NFL playoffs. All right, more quarterback notes here. Eli Manning. Well, the Giants plan on keeping Eli for the last year of his deal. He does have a roster bonus due on March 17th, so it didn't have to come quickly here for the Giants. Now, they're still going to look into adding a young quarterback for now. They are ahead of the Jaguars in the NFL draft and other team that desperately needs a quarterback and needs quarterback help. So the Giants' plan could be keep Eli Manning and maybe finally draft someone this year because Kyle Valletta, he ain't the answer either, folks. So Eli Manning, the numbers can even be a little bit deceptive. He was not good this year. And you can try to blame the offensive line if you want or the defense or whatever. Eli Manning is not good enough to win playoff games right now. He is not a good quarterback, all right? That's where we're at right now. Now, Alex Tanney's your backup. Kyle Lauletta was really more or less the number three almost all year long. Got to number two, then got demoted back to the number three role. You don't have a long-term option. So if you're the Giants, even if you bring back Eli Manning, time to go find a franchise quarterback sooner rather than later. It's not a good quarterback class. So if you miss on Haskins, maybe a tank for 2020 for Fromm or Tua or Justin Herbert next year. So should Eli start for the Giants next season? Type Y for yes, type N for no. 
Look, you're not going to find many other better options out there that's going to be cheap. So unless you can draft Dwayne Haskins, I don't know what else the Giants are really going to do. Maybe it's best there to tank next year and keep starting Eli Manning, who is not the same guy he was during those playoff runs. All right, more quarterback notes. Ryan Tannehill. Now, Adam Schefter says that the Dolphins are not going to bring him back. They can save $18.75 million by making Tannehill a post-June 1st cut. And Tannehill, well, he's just not the franchise guy. Maybe he's one of the top 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL, but his battled injuries isn't all that effective. Maybe he should be better as a wide receiver. I kind of kick as a wide receiver at Texas A&M, but he just wasn't all that effective this year at, at Miami or with the Dolphins. He just didn't play all that well. Injuries, I know, were a big factor there, but 17 touchdown passes, 9 interceptions, under 2,000 yards, and I know injuries, again, played a big role, but... Tannehill's not the guy. I think that's very, very clear right now for the Miami Dolphins. Now, this leaves a gaping hole at the quarterback spot for the Dolphins. And maybe they're in the Drew Locke, Daniel Jones ugh, range in the NFL draft. Tannehill's going to be cut. Brock Osweiler, he ain't it. He's, he is a free. He's going to be a free agent. Same with David Fells. Luke Falk spent the year on IR, but I don't want to hear anything about Luke Falk being a franchise option for the Miami Dolphins. He's not it. My number one fear for the Dolphins, though, is they spend a first-round pick on someone like Daniel Jones, and they're just kind of stuck in the exact same spot they are right now. All right, the Jaguars now, their top decision makers, they are going to be back. Doug Marone, Tom Coughlin, and Caldwell, they are all returning this year as the Dolphins' key decision makers. Now, I don't know if that's the best idea because the Jags fell apart, they regressed. Yes, they're just one year removed from making the AFC Championship game, but after the Patriots game, everything just fell apart. They won their Super Bowl and they couldn't win anything afterwards. So Marone, Coughlin, Caldwell, they'll all get at least one more year, but they are all going to be on the hot seat next season. So Doug Marone, that has been announced by, by Jacksonville. Those are not going, those guys are not going to go anywhere, at least for this year. All right, folks, use hashtag NFL in the comments section to get your questions in for our mailbag. Later on in the show, we'll answer a lot of the great questions. I know you guys already have, see quite a few in there. Stay tuned, that'll be near the end of the show. We'll answer your questions. Draft, agency, coaching, whatever you want, coming up in a little bit. All right, Leonard Fournette and the Jaguars, they have issues right now. So the Jags are going to try and void the guarantees left on Fournette's deal. Now that was due to suspension for fighting Shaq Lawson. The Jags, once they do this, the NFLPA will file a grievance because it's not clear if they actually can do it. Suspensions void it, but this was not for a drug test or discipline issues off the field. It was for an on-the-field fight with Shaq Lawson. This could get ugly, and Fournette had a really bad year for the Jags, under 500 yards, averages three and a half. 0.3 yards per carry. He was bad. He was not number four overall pick worthy whatsoever. So Fournette, who was supposed to be the feature back and the feature of the offense for Jacksonville, didn't show up this year. He was a mess. So should the Jags cut ties with Fournette? Type one for yes, type two for no. I say no. Let's try and get Fournette back on track. Look, that locker room clearly had issues this year. Hopefully that changes next year, because if they don't, Marone's going to be out of a job once again. All right, the Ravens now. Could there be a John Harbaugh trade? Normally we get player trade rumors, now they got a coaching trade rumor. The Ravens that announced they were going to extend John Harbaugh. That was the, their plan, but that extension has not yet happened. And there are reports that teams could try to trade for John Harbaugh. And we know how close they were last year to firing Harbaugh. If he's available, he becomes the top head coaching target on the market, along with the likes of maybe a Mike McCarthy. The Broncos could have interest. The Dolphins could desperately want John Harbaugh. I don't know if you're actually going to see him traded, but if he does, let me know in the comments section which team is most likely to trade for John Harbaugh. I think the Packers could be an option. I think the Broncos make sense. And the Dolphins, as well, we know how much owner Stephen Ross likes the Harbaugh family. So let me know what you guys think there in the comments section. All right, more coaching notes here. One guy's coming back, Ron Rivera. He announced that he will return as the uh, Carolina Panthers head coach. So good news there for Carolina if you're a fan of Ron 
Rivera. Now, the team did collapse down the stretch last year. Injuries a big factor there, namely to Cam Newton. But when we go through our, our head coach hot seats for next year, Ron Rivera going to be near the top. If they miss the playoffs for the third time in four years, after making it to the Super Bowl not that long ago, Rivera might be out of a job. Coordinator's gonna, probably going to change again. Maybe Steve Wilkes comes back as the Panthers' D.C. and tries to save Ron Rivera's job. But they need Cam Newton healthy because once his arm started to go south, that entire team collapsed. All right, folks, today's show is brought to you by BetDSI, the Internet's number one sportsbook. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code LIVE120. It'll get you a 120% deposit bonus. And after you do that, DM us on Twitter at chatsports. We'll get you guys hooked up with an NFL jersey. It's the best deal out there. Perfect uh, bounce back gift if you, if you can get what you wanted for Christmas. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code LIVE120 gets you a 120% deposit bonus. It is the best deal out there right now, folks. All right, Hunter Henry, he's next up here. He will play against the Baltimore Ravens reports ESPN. Remember, he tore his ACL back in May during practice. This is a huge addition for the Chargers during their playoff run. Now, Henry will see how impactful he truly is, but he definitely brings a more pass-catching option and a more well-rounded tight end. 45 grabs last year, 57 yards and 4 TDs, 8 TDs the year before, and this comes when Henry, Henry was supposed to have his breakout season. It didn't end up happening, but Henry now in position to have that dynamic year that we all expect from him. I think you'll see that end up going on here for the, for the LA Chargers. Maybe the bigger come next year, but if he can have a nice little impact, have a nice little addition down the stretch, that would be a big boost there for the LA Chargers. All right, one last rumor for you guys. Nick Foles, and he left the game versus the Redskins with a rib injury. The good news is the tests revealed no break for Nick Foles. All right, that was a big boost there for the, for the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Eagles play the Chicago Bears on Sunday at 4.40 p.m. Eastern time. Nick Foles there will be the starting quarterback in that game. Nate Sudfeld will remain the backup quarterback. So a big boost there, Philadelphia. And again, not much of a surprise as far as I'm concerned. We mentioned this in our NFC playoff picture. I thought all along the Eagles were going to have Nick Foles. Only bruised ribs, so he'll play through the pain there and maybe result in just one more magical Nick Foles-Eagles playoff run. 